Hi, I'm Joe Jack. I'm here at Allen & Heath, and I'm here to show you the Zone 2D. Uh, during my travels, a lot of people ask me what's the main difference between the 1D and the 2D, since they look very similar. And I think the easiest way to tell you is to show you. Um, as you can see, I have both the 1D and the 2D up here. Both of them are MIDI controllers. The 2D uh, is, uh, re does require uh, AC power. You will have to plug this into the wall. It's about the same size as the 1D, but have, has a few extra features actually has a lot of extra features and that's what most people don't realize. Uh, the one big thing is it has its built-in sound card. It's an 18 channel sound card which will give you 8 in and 10 out. The MIDI surface you can uh, assign 87 different controls across two different layers. All right, the other additional feature is the actual MIDI clock found on the right side over here. The important thing with this is that it has an excellent auto BPM detection, so if you're using software that can use an external MIDI clock, the Zone 2D is perfect for that. It um, has a built-in headphone section with an extremely loud headphone output, and that's been uh, a big complaint from a lot of DJs that the headphone outputs of MIDI controllers are just not loud enough. Well, the 2D, plenty. Plenty of volume on the 2D. In fact, it goes up to 11. You can't ask for more. Um, there's also a crossfader which will be used mostly for the software. So for this demo purpose, we're using Tractor Scratch Pro, and I have two songs going across the two decks. Um, very similar to the 1D with the playing controls, my play and start, my start and stop is on the bottom. And I can play both decks at the same time. We'll just focus on the left deck right now. Starting from the top, again, very similar to the 1D, I can insert a loop according to the numbers I have shown on the screen right there. So this will be a two-beat loop. And that goes in there, and it's looping, you can tell by the green triangles. To get out, I press the button again, and now I'm out. Beneath that, we have this assigned from our um, the zone templates that can be downloaded from the zone website. We have it set so this is our effects section. The bottom pot will control which effect I'm using. You can see it change up there. And we'll pick the filter pulse. To turn it on, hit the button down here, and then I can control the parameters from up here. So that's what we are, the template is using effects in this section here. This is going to be my volume control for the channel, channel 1. And this will be, it's got to read it. Channel 2 is on the far end. The two center channels, these faders are going to be for the filters, which can be found in the dead center. Which again, if you don't want to use these faders for the filters, you can change them to anything you want because it's MIDI. And that's the great thing about MIDI. All the buttons in this section here are to control the different parameters, turning things on and off. The platter will allow you to scroll between the different tracks and you can load different songs by pressing up or down. When I press down, it's going to load the tracks to the right side. And if I press up, it's going to load it to the left side. That will play. I stop the tracks there. Now, there's also a dedicated mic input, which when you're using the sound card, um, it goes to input 5.6, which can also double as a line input, which is nice. A lot of sound cards won't offer that feature. And the MIDI clock is here. The important thing about the MIDI clock is if, if you don't really understand what MIDI clock does, it sends, um, it, it tells other devices that's connected to it at what tempo to play. It will be the master controller. So if you're using this with Ableton, let's say, Ableton Live, this will take over their internal clock, allowing you to control the BPM from here, which is a very important feature. Has a lot of advanced features as well. I highly recommend you reading the user guide. The user guide is available online. And it, if you're checking out this video trying to find out some advanced tips, or if you're having some issues and you're looking at this video and I'm not answering them, definitely check out the user guide. It will have all the answers you need there. I learned a lot strictly from the user guides.
and beneath that is the headphone section which you can monitor any of the different outputs 1, 2, all the way up to 7 and 8 with giving you volume control and of course you have quarter inch and eighth inch outputs which is another brilliant idea since a lot of DJs lose their little tips off the end of their headphones so that's great. Um, the crossfader can be assigned to the software which we have it disabled at the moment but oh nope there it is and of course wherever you have the crossfader it's going to do that. So if you have any questions, I highly recommend checking out the user guide. I hope I was able to answer most of your questions, but if not, definitely check out the user guide. That was the Zone 2D.